Good morning, guys. Good morning, Internet. Uh, I, I'm i EJ. My name is EJ, and I'm back again with another narrated art time-lapse video. And this time, we are going to be taking a look at Peggy the Porcupine Slayer. This is one of the daily sketches that I did for conceptart.org back in 2018. So, yeah, it's been a year since I've taken a look at this artwork. Um, so, let's just get started <laughs> why don't we um so yeah the prompt for this particular artwork was peggy the porcupine slayer and i got the prompt from the daily sketch group uh, in conceptart.org and right off the bat well okay I i'm not really sure if this is true or not but from what i remember right off the bat i already kind of have an idea of what i wanted to do which is pretty much uh, what the end product is, which is, you know, this girl about to do battle with this crazy porcupine mech. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I basically have a very uh, loose interpretation of the prompt because, uh, I mean, if you read the prompt, it sounded like the prompt is just talking about a regular porcupine it's not necessarily talking about you know this uber super robotic mech <laughs> boss that you have to fight at the end of a final level so yeah um but yeah though that, that was pretty much like what i have in mind or uh, was peggy was just gonna be this peggy was going to be this human fighting a robot and so Right now we're taking a look at the sketches that I made and I just pretty much just got done uh, drawing Peggy out. Uh, as you can see, what I sketched out is pretty much what I have in end product, you know. Um, she definitely has the, the vibe of uh, the girl from that movie uh, Sucker Punch. Uh, Baby Doll, I think, is the name of the lead character in that movie, and she totally has that vibe, you know, like two guns and a sword. You know, what else can you ask for? I mean, this girl is pretty badass, if you, you know, if I have to be honest, you know, she's like ready to kick butt pretty much. So, yeah. And then, of course, I'm sketching the robot, which is what I'm doing right now. And, um,. It's really cool that the subject is a porcupine because if you were to take a look at my regular sketchbook and my traditional sketchbook, I've been doing this random mech shapes, right? And my random make sh mech shapes are very much like, it looks like Sputnik, essentially. You know, it has, I, I would just create like some random mech object and put a bunch of spikes in it and it's been my thing for like a year or two now I, I don't know where I got the idea from it's just you know when it, when I need to warm up uh, and whatnot I kind of just do this thing where I do a random mech shape and uh, my point in saying in stating that story is that you know when I made uh, this particular uh, speed paint I was already in the habit of doing uh, my daily warm-ups because that's really my daily warm-ups is just me doing all this random mech shapes right and so the mech the robot pretty much uh, kind of goes along with what I've been doing in my traditional sketchbook which is just this really spiky object thing you know so it was absolutely cool that you know, the subject is a porcupine because, well, porcupine says spine, so obviously. And, um, so yeah. Um, it, it's just cool that, you know, this drawing kind of goes along with what I've been obsessing about in my traditional sketchbook. But anyways, enough about, <laughs> enough about that little side tidbit. Uh, I just got finished sketching out the mech, the mech robot, the porcupine the porcupine robot and it's all spiky you know and the way I envision this uh, boss level to happen is in a dungeon of sorts you know which is pretty much just what I'm drawing um, 
and so yeah after I'm done sketching all this out I'm gonna put a plain in color just to get started and I'm duplicating the sketch layer just to kind of darken it up a little bit I'm adding uh, a black layer set on color so I can check values when I need to and I'm not really sure what this lasso thing is uh, looks like I'm trying to lighten it up which I'm not really sure why I was doing that um, you gotta forgive me typically I try and view this before making <laughs> my recording to make notes but uh oh I know what I'm doing now oh yeah I didn't realize that I was trying to attempt that and it didn't work out <laughs> okay I'm trying to do this whole atmospheric thing is what I was trying to do and basically the very far back is very light because it's supposed to be farther back and then the closer objects are much darker because they're closer so but in the end I pretty much uh, did not follow through with this whole atmospheric thing because it ended up doing the whole uh, cave thing which technically in a cave uh, you'd still get that atmospheric effect or like some people when they paint like uh, the interior of the caves they'll still try and do that whole atmospheric thing uh, I can't think of an artist who does that right now. Jordan Grimmer, I think one of his cave paintings, he, he employed the atmospheric perspective and it worked out very well. Um, so I guess maybe I was trying to emulate something similar, but uh, I, yeah, <laughs> I don't think I pulled it off at the end product <laughs> very well. But anyway, so yeah, that's what that was, was an atmospheric perspective kind of deal. And then I added that pink uh, highlight to kind of denote that there's like this flash of light, you know, this kind of illuminating the robot, you know, so that it would lead the viewer's eyes straight to the robot. And then after this, I'm pretty much going to just start putting in a random bunch of colors um, just to have some form of color. Then you kind of see me start doing that now. And then again, like my standard uh, routine, after I put down just a bunch of random colors, um, I'm going to merge my sketch layer, the layer with all the random colors, and the base paint layer, or the layer with just the basic colors. I'm going to merge all of them into one, and then I'm going to smudge them all into recognizable shapes so I could get um, a base paint to... Uh, to detail basically so so yeah here's that's basically what's gonna happen
Okay, so I'm almost done uh, blurring and smudging um, the background. Uh, real quick, I want to go over some of the things that happened uh, that I didn't get to mention, which um, I use a photo. I added uh, an extra photo uh, for more color information. Um, I've been doing, I do this every now and then, you know, if I feel like I want to mess up the color some more, uh, I would put in a photo to bash um, well, to smudge in together with the colors that I put. And then, um, what else happened? Um, oh yeah, uh, that's it really. And then I started smudging uh, the background and obviously I'm done smudging the background. Now I'm working on pretty much the characters, which is Peggy. Peggy was really easy because she's really diminutive compared to um, the porcupine robot, porcupine mech. Um, as you can see, when I do my smudging thing, I, I really try to follow my initial sketch, my initial outline, you know. Um, if you do this right, that sketch will end up being like a like a base shadow of sorts that you could, you know, basically work on, uh, work upon. Um, you can see like the spikes are all black and dark when I smudged it. Um, so, yeah. Um, it makes it really easy to you know to have shadows or it's real quick and easy uh, shadows is what I'm trying to say and uh, another thing that I was gonna mention about this whole smudging thing um, I just did the video tricycle reader not too long ago and in it in that video I was talking about how this particular technique of mine is very much pastel like and I didn't even realize that it was very much pastel-like in approach and in practice until I vocalized it. Because in pastels, you kind of smudge things around, you know, to have some form of quick blend. And then you go back over it with your regular uh, pastels. So when I do my speed paints and any of my painting in general, especially when i trying to get to a base paint, like this one layer where I paint stuff on, um basically like what i do to get to that base paint is to do this whole smudging thing just so that i can have something that i could work with when i start my detailing process so like as you can see i just finished um the smudging of the robot and i've basically started detailing the background which you know i'm kind of it's really easy when you do the whole detailing thing when you have a good base paint like this because basically all you really need to do is delineate your edges and basically your shapes read easier and better when your edges are uh, clear so you, you delineate your edges mark your edges sharpen it if you need to and then of course you accentuate the shadows you know in my case i'm adding a little bit of the shadows to the block that's already been there and then you add your highlights um so yeah it's really easy so that's pretty much what i'm doing right now i'm sharpening some of my uh some of my spikes on the on the porcupine robot because when i smudge it you know they kind of disappear and kind of get all messy so so yeah i'm like sharpening it a little bit and then of course adding the shadows and yeah i mean this goes by real quick uh pretty much and then after I'm done with the whole spine thing, uh, just about the only thing that I ever really did differently was I colored the eyes of the porcupine robot red so that, you know, it kind of stands out. And I also gave Peggy uh, warmer colors. So basically what I did is I, I took warm colors like a red and yellow, I think was what I used and kind of just put it on color mode when I uh, put in my brush. Um, the whole painting in itself is very cool. It's all like blues and purples. Um, so having that red for the eyes and that red and yellow for Peggy really makes them stand out. So it's like so much easier to read basically. So yeah.
Okay, so I stand corrected. I thought I went back with a brush and set it on color mode, but it turns out that I just did a color balance on Peggy. Um, I did a color balance edit um, on her, or maybe it was just, I, th I think it was actually a hue um, variation edit, actually. It wasn't a color balance edit. Um, so yeah, that's how I got this warm color uh, on her dress. And then now all I'm pretty much doing is just sharpening her out, you know, so that she reads a little bit better. Just pretty much just like what I did with the porcupine mech. So yeah. And then the other thing that I did was um, I that shaft of light that's hitting the porcupine, I widened it a little bit because it's creating a tangent on Peggy's head right now. You can see that Peggy's head is like right smack at the edge of that shaft of light. Um, and so I basically had to get rid of that tangent so that Peggy uh, reads a little bit better. So yeah, but um, the speed paint went by real fast, real quick. I was really happy with the result. Um, and I remember that this was one of the, also one of the speed paints that I did that, uh, that is predominantly blue. Um, but yeah, this is cool because I do, I did blues on this one. So yeah. But anyways, that's the end of the, the speed paint. Thank you guys so much for watching this with me. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night. Good night.